I would consider myself a child of the aviation age because I was born just uh, 15 years after the first flight at Kitty Hawk. Even though he had never set foot in an airplane, Elmer Jones, one of the original Tuskegee Airmen, knew his passion for airplanes would one day lead him down the path of flight. While in junior high school, I became interested in building model airplanes. I built my airplanes from scratch, if I say, and, and I loved it. Everybody was intensely interested in aviation, especially the, the young people. Looking back today at Chinook Field in Rantoul, Illinois, where he began training to become Tuskegee's 99th Pursuit Squadron ground crew commander, the retired Air Force colonel recalls his early years of preparation. As a college student, Jones was one of the first African-American men selected during World War II to participate in the government's civilian pilot training program. He earned his degree in engineering and his pilot's license at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Howard was one of six black colleges that participated in that program. The objective was to develop our country's aircraft capability, both commercial and military, of course. And because of my interest in, uh, in aviation, I jumped in that right away. During the war, African Americans organized efforts to rid the country of unfair employment practices. They challenged President Roosevelt to fight not only for injustices against the Jews in Nazi Germany, but also for racial justice in America. Yancey Williams, a college friend of Elmer Jones, decided to take a stand against the United States military. Yancey Williams, under the auspices of the NAACP, sued the War Department to accept black candidates into the regular military training program. And after they filed that suit, the government announced that they were going to form this single squadron, segregated at an airfield built for them in Tuskegee, Alabama. And that program moved along pretty smartly once the Air Force agreed to accept black students. On June 25, 1941, President Roosevelt took action. He signed Executive Order 8022, establishing racial equality, fair employment practices, and the full participation of blacks in the defense program. Prior to the signing, the Army was forming the first black fighter squadron known as the Tuskegee Experiment. An experiment bound to fail because the War Department had already decided that blacks were not fit for military duty. They based their assertions on flawed studies conducted after the First World War. And the result of it was that Negroes uh, didn't have the cranial capacity to, to fly, and uh, they won't take orders from their own officers, and didn't have the physical coordination. In other words, they can't make it. So that, that was the attitude of the Air Force. The Air Force refused to fully implement and activate Executive Order 8022. Segregated facilities remained intact for pilots preparing at Tuskegee and the ground crew training in aviation engineering at Chanute Field. Though the fight for equality remained constant on base, Elmer Jones and his men would not let racism win. There were six cadets that entered that program when we were together in the barracks and stuff. I don't remember ever discussing the idea that, hey, this is a segregated setup and I don't like racial segregation. This is a new thing, a brand new thing for the black race. I mean, we have to prove something. We were happy and proud to be in aircraft engineering, even though you could, you could see the little slights here and there. After completion of the ground crew technical program, the officers were sent to finish training with the fighter pilots preparing in Tuskegee, Alabama. Under the command of Benjamin Davis, Jr., the first African-American West Point graduate, the 99th Pursuit Squadron set out on their first flight overseas. They later joined forces with the all-black 332nd Fighter Group formed by Davis. Their primary function was to protect bomber escorts striking strategic targets over the Mediterranean and Europe. Elmer Jones was assigned to serve as the ground crew commander. He reported to Davis, who always urged his men to prove themselves in combat as the best response to racism. Colonel Davis was a strict disciplinarian. 
and he told his pilots to stay with those bombers and uh, not to go looking around for a fight. They earned a reputation of sticking with the bombers as they went over to the target. It was very important and not so easy to keep all those airplanes in the air. Keep in mind, it's a segregated outfit. And uh, the 99th were more or less very carefully picked and they wanted to be there. And knowing General Davis and knowing the pilots, they obeyed him. <laughs> On July 2nd, 1943, a member of the 99th Pursuit Squadron was about to make history. The squadron was flying over the Mediterranean Sea when the planes they were escorting began unloading bombs over their target. A group of enemy fighter planes appeared and began their attack. As the battle ensued, Lieutenant Charles Hall from the 99th shot down a German plane. The moment had finally arrived. Charles Hall became the first African-American fighter pilot in the United States military to destroy an enemy aircraft. Colonel Jones was with Charles that day. Charlie was one of the first pilots that went over. You know, he went over the 99th. He shot down the first enemy airplane. That was one of the most exciting things for me, and, and I was there taking pictures. We gave him a Coke for a present. We win the game from then on. Soon the Army Air Corps began to accept the growing accomplishments of Colonel Davis and his men. The 99th went on to serve in other Army Air Corps units, and the training of black pilots and ground crewmen continued. During the war, the Tuskegee Airmen flew more than 700 missions and destroyed 261 enemy aircraft. In the end, Colonel Jones says that despite the great challenges his men encountered with the enemy abroad and the enemy known as racism, segregation presented an unexpected opportunity. I think that being segregated was in our favor because the sort of a salt and pepper thing if we had more salt and pepper, you, you wouldn't be able to, to know what's going on, to, uh, to watch the progress of each of these individuals spread all around the world, you know? And they could watch what we're doing. Uh, we were a team. We were all school together. We were friends. And uh, we don't make trouble. I mean, we, we was capable, given the opportunities. It, it helped the society a great deal. <laughs>